Today, I'm recipe testing three pies to see which ones will make the final cut for Thanksgiving Day. I'm gonna get started by making some pie crust. I typically make this by hand, but today I'm also gonna be testing making it in the food processor. I know a lot of people make their pie crust in the food processor, so this is probably not a novel idea to most of you, but I usually just make it by hand because I don't wanna get the food processor dirty, but I thought that would be a good shortcut to practice doing now for Thanksgiving Day. I'm gonna add in my flour, some salt, cubed butter, and a little bit of honey. I'm gonna give this a few good pulses. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Let me plug it in. Try again. I'm gonna give this a few good pulses. That looks pretty good. See how it's nice and crumbly? That's what we want right there. I'm going to put some cold, cold, cold water in, just a few tablespoons at a time. And then we'll pulse it between scoops here. That might be good. All right, I just want to smush it together. Again, this is new for me making it in the food processor, so it's kind of different than what I normally do, but that's okay. We're going to give it a try. All right. This makes two crusts, so I'm just going to split it. And I'm going to wrap each one up in parchment paper and it's going to go in the refrigerator until we're ready for it. I'm going to bring both of these over and get them in the refrigerator. So the first pie I'm going to make today is a shoe fly pie. If you don't know what a shoe fly pie is, it's a classic here in Pennsylvania Dutch country. And basically it's a molasses pie with crumbs on top. It's not one that is my favorite pie but my husband absolutely loves it. And I've never made one before, ever. And I've certainly never made one where I've swapped out the sugar for coconut sugar, which is what we're gonna do today. The first thing I'm gonna do for this pie is get the crumbs going. And to do that, I've just cleaned up my food processor and we're going to pulse all the ingredients for the crumbs right here in the food processor. So for that, I have flour. I have all of my spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves some salt, some Redmond's real salt. You can use whatever kind of salt you've got, coconut sugar, and butter. All right, now we're gonna reserve some of these crumbs for our topping to save for later. I'm gonna do about a quarter of a cup and I'm just gonna put them in here for later. Now we're gonna work on our filling. I'm gonna take my molasses. It smells like gingerbread. And we're gonna whisk our egg into the molasses. All right, we're gonna set this aside for one minute. Now I'm gonna measure out three quarters of a cup of boiling water. And to that, I'm going to add baking soda. And then we're gonna go back to this molasses mixture. And we're going to whisk this while we pour in the hot water and hope we don't get scrambled eggs. I wish you could smell this. This smells really good. It's making me hungry for gingerbread cookies. All 
All right, now we take the rest of this crumb mixture and we add that in. All right, and now we're gonna whisk this up. And that's it for the filling. I'm gonna go get my crust back out of the refrigerator and roll that out and get it ready for our pie. What kind of a crust does shoe fly usually have like for the edges? Do they usually do like the little knuckle prints? Do right, they do yeah, just little the little flutes? So my husband, who is the shoe fly pie expert, says fluted edges for this pie. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna use my knuckle and go around the edge. I'm not an expert, I just like pie. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna use my knuckle and go around the edge here. And it's gonna be rustic. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to this kind of thing. Otherwise I would go crazy. That looks pretty good to me. My husband is a perfectionist, if you couldn't tell. All right, so now we're gonna pour in the filling. And then we're gonna sprinkle on our reserved crumbs. And by the way, this is not a healthy pie. This is ridiculously indulgent and sweet. And we're making it because it's my husband's favorite. And it is slightly better. And it's, yeah, it's slightly better because we traded out some of the sugar, but I think that's kind of a stretch to say. All right, we are gonna get this beautiful pie into the oven at 450 degrees. It's gonna cook at 450 for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna crank it back down to 350 for the remaining time. All right, so the shoe fly pie is a little bit of a disappointment. This is not how it's supposed to look. It should have like a separate crumb layer on top, but the gooey layer completely absorbed the crumb layer, which is not supposed to happen. So we'll see how it tastes. I'm gonna get my cameraman to put his camera up on a tripod and he's gonna come over here with me because my husband is the one who's a shoe fly pie expert, not me. I don't even know if I've ever eaten a shoe fly pie before, I think I've tasted it once or twice and I never really liked it, so we'll see. Okay, here we are. Tell me what you think. Do you want me to take the first bite or you want to take the first bite? I don't know what it's supposed to taste like, honestly. I'm going to try it. I think we invented something new. Well, it's okay. probably just more of a dry bottom. So there's uh, like wet ones and dry ones. So the, the wet bottom ones usually have a defined layer um, that are a little bit more liquidy on the bottom um, that don't soak up so many of the, the crumbs. Um, but it kind of just turned more into a, a dry one and it soaked up a lot of that liquid. It tastes like a gingerbread cookie or gingerbread. I mean, the flavor is not bad. The crust is good. I like crust. I'm a crust girl. It is just more of a cakey texture though. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a really nice flaky buttery crust. And that makes me happy. Try again. Oh. Try again. It's edible. It's good. It just doesn't taste like a shoe fly pie. I will put the recipe that I used, well, that I tweaked and used down below. But if you want to make a real shoe fly pie, this is not the right texture. I don't know if it's because we swapped out the sugar or what, but it tastes okay. I mean, it has good taste. 
it's more of a texture thing. It's not quite yeah. one way or the other. It's kind of an in-between, a wet and a dry. You win some, you lose some. Now I'm gonna work on a caramel apple galette. And if you don't know, a galette is basically just a fancy name for a free form pie. So we're gonna get that started. toss these with just a little bit of cinnamon. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest just for some brightness. And a little squish of lemon. Squeeze. A squish. All right, I'm just gonna mix these up a little bit. And those are good to go. Now I'm gonna go get my pie crust. Side. Do we want to do an oval galette or do we want to do a round galette? What is an oval but a stretch circle? All right, we're going to do a circle, I guess. Let's try it. It's probably going to be more ovally anyway. And you can arrange these however you like. My seven-year-old daughter actually watched somebody making a galette on TV a while back and she thought that it was the coolest thing ever. So this is kind of a, a special treat for her. I thought she would appreciate it. Do you guys have Thanksgiving pies that you make every single year? I feel like we never make the same pies twice. I think every year I get a hankering to make some new some new pie I've never made before, and then it's always like an experiment, which probably would freak a lot of people out. I know a lot of people like their Thanksgiving traditions. I like to live adventurously. Okay, now that we have all of our apples arranged here, I am just gonna start folding in the crust. Hopefully I left enough space that we have enough crust to come up over here. It is supposed to be rustic. Okay, now I'm gonna do an egg wash on the crust and then we're actually gonna pop this in the refrigerator or the freezer, wherever I have room for the next 10 minutes while we put together a caramel sauce. Let me get the egg. All right, so this egg wash is just one egg and a tablespoon, about, about a tablespoon of water. Whisk it together. And now we're gonna brush our crust. My favorite pie is actually lemon meringue, but I haven't perfected that yet, not with, um, alternative sweeteners. So if anyone knows a really good lemon meringue pie um, recipe that uses non-refined sugars, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna go pop this in the refrigerator and I will be right back. Okay, now I'm gonna do a caramel sauce for our galette. And for that, I'm gonna do a cup of coconut sugar, a cup of heavy cream, a pinch of salt, and a little bit of vanilla. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't want to use heavy cream, you could also use coconut cream for this recipe and that would work just fine. All right, now that the sugar has dissolved and it's nice and bubbly, I'm gonna add in a little bit of vanilla or a lot of vanilla and take it off the heat. This is good to go. Okay, I took this back out of the refrigerator. Now I'm going to pour about half of my caramel sauce in here and then we'll reserve half for the end. This is gonna go in a 350 degree oven until it's nice and golden brown. Okay, our galette's out of the oven and we are gonna drizzle it with our reserved caramel sauce now. All right, I'm gonna try my galette. It turned out absolutely beautiful and I have high hopes for it. It's really good. You can taste the lemon right away. It gives it a bright freshness that it really needs with that um, really sweet caramel sauce. The crust is buttery and flaky. This one's a keeper. So it is actually the next day. Last night after we finished up with our apple galette, I ended up making supper for our family and then got involved in a sewing project. And here we are a day later, but now I'm gonna make our third pie, which is gonna be a peanut butter pie. I already prepped our crust, which is right here. And it's just the same kind of crust that we made yesterday. I just made a second batch. So for peanut butter pie, you can either do a graham cracker crust or you can do a regular pie crust. I do have a recipe for a graham cracker crust made out of almond flour that's absolutely delicious. But for today, I kind of just wanted to do a regular pie crust. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna roll this crust out and we're gonna blind bake it in the oven and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Instead of cutting off the extra dough for this crust, I'm just gonna fold it under, like so. Just to make a little bit of a cleaner edge. All right, now we're just gonna do the old knuckle trick and give it some fluted edges. Okay, so now we're gonna blind bake it, but we don't want it to poof up while it's baking because when you blind bake it, you don't have any of the filling in because this is a no-bake filling. So we're gonna just use our fork, make some holes here in the bottom. Now I'm gonna place a parchment paper right here. If you crumble your parchment paper, it usually will lay nicer. Better. Now I'm gonna get out my pie beans. They're just pinto beans, dry pinto beans. And we're gonna fill it up. That is gonna ensure that we don't lose our pie shape. I did this the other day when I was recipe testing a different pie and my kids thought that I was making bean pie and my youngest insisted she had to eat the beans. I said that wasn't gonna be very good and I didn't let her eat them, but. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Alrighty, we're gonna put this in the oven and we are gonna thoroughly bake this until it's nice and golden brown because this is the only time this crust is gonna bake. While our pie crust is baking, we're gonna go ahead and start on the filling. Now this is by no means a healthy pie. None of the pies we're making today really are healthy. So just keep that in mind as I tell you the next ingredients. I'm gonna pour two cups of heavy cream into my mixing bowl. and we are gonna whip this up. All right, so now we are going to set aside our whipped cream. And into this bowl, I'm gonna add our next ingredients. I have one eight ounce block of cream cheese. 
I said this wasn't a healthy pie, so you've been warned. It's a special treat. We try to live by the 80-20 rule as much as possible, but every once in a while, I do like to make treats. So we're just gonna whip up this um, cream cheese until it's nice and soft. Now we're gonna add in our peanut butter. I like to use the natural peanut butter from Costco. It's about as cheap as you can get for a, a natural organic peanut butter. And it's pretty good. Now to this, I'm going to add a splash of vanilla. All right, and then in my blender here, I put a half a cup of coconut sugar and I blended that with a tablespoon of tapioca starch. I did that just to make it into more of a powdered sugar. That way it incorporates better in our pie filling. So that's what I'm putting in now. All right, we're gonna whip this up again and we're gonna start really slow because we don't want, we don't want that sugar to go flying everywhere. Now I'm gonna taste it just because peanut butter. It's good. It's actually not very sweet. So it's a nice fatty pie without being overly sweet. Does that make it better? I don't know. You be the judge. Okay, now we are going to mix together the whipped cream with the peanut butter mixture. And I'm just gonna do this a little bit at a time. I'll put a little bit in here. I actually need to get a bigger mixer. I'll get out the big guns. We're just gonna fold it together. Yeah, my husband said we're not even 80-20 rule. We're usually about 95% clean. The most unclean things we eat are the things I make for our channel, probably. <laughs> and every once in a while I take out pizza because, I mean pizza, really. You wanna try and just fold it in gently, get it all incorporated so it keeps its nice fluffiness. So I really like the apple pie, but I'm a peanut butter girl, so I think that this one's gonna probably be my favorite of all the three pies we made today. I mean, you can't go wrong with peanut butter and chocolate. All right, that is good to go. Our pie crust is out of the oven and it is completely cool. I actually put it in the refrigerator for a little bit because you don't want it to be warm at all. It will melt your filling. So now we're gonna pour our filling into our pie crust. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer while we make our ganache topping. Now we're gonna make the chocolate ganache for the top of our peanut butter pie. I heated up some more heavy whipping cream. I know, don't come for me. And we're just gonna pour that over the chocolate chips. I'm gonna reserve a tiny bit. I have a little bit here of um, peanut butter, about two tablespoons, and I'm just gonna mix a little bit of the heavy cream in there we can make a peanut butter drizzle for the top. Put a little maple syrup in to water it down. All right, so now that this has been sitting on our chocolate chips, yep, they're nice and melted, so we're gonna give them a good stir. Probably work better with a fork. All right, now we just need our pie back. Maybe that looks good. This is my kind of pie. Okay. Now we're gonna put on our peanut butter drizzle. I'd say that's a beauty. 
we're gonna pop this back in the freezer for, it should really be in the refrigerator for an hour, let's put it that way. But we're gonna pop it in the freezer for 15 minutes so that we can give this a taste. Okay, so this can go in the refrigerator for one hour to a day before you eat it. It should be in the refrigerator for that long. But for the sake of being able to eat it for you, I'm taking one for the team and we got it out early. So it's a little bit mushier than it would be if it was in the refrigerator for longer. It should taste really good though. Let's try it. That is by far my favorite of all three pies we made. I like that the peanut butter layer isn't super sweet. If you want it a little bit sweeter, you could. You could add more sugar, but I like it just like that. The chocolate has a nice sweetness to it, and the crust is crunchy. It's perfect. I guess two out of three pies isn't bad. I do want to play around with that um, shoe fly pie and see if we can fix it at some point. But for this year, I think we found our two winners. You want to try it, Ethan? Give the cameraman a bite.